Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have those of us present here at the Hilton Hotel Hohola with views around Papua New Guinea. And uh, today we have uh, views from 10 different countries in our region and around the world. So a warm welcome to you uh, from Port Moresby. Firstly, I'd just like to apologize about last week's webinar. We had some technical issues. Uh, these have uh, since been uh, dealt with, and we're confident we'll be able to run through our webinar successfully this afternoon. So uh, thank you, and thank you for your patience, and thank you for, for calling back in again uh, today. My name is Richard Kassman. I'm with Total Exploration and Production Papua New Guinea. Um, I'm Vice President of the PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum, and uh, today it's my privilege to chair the webinar, our theme, One Team Moving Forward PNG. Rarely does a week go by without the PNG LNG project hitting both mainstream and social media, both positive and sometimes not so positive. And indeed, uh, some may, may say not dissimilar to rugby league. And by that, I mean it attracts an abundance of armchair experts and keyboard warriors run amok. Today's webinar uh, aims to tell the story of the PNG LNG project. We'll enhance your knowledge of the project itself and how much of an impact it, is, it has on its surrounding communities and on our country. We will see through the eyes and hearts of Papua New Guineans impacted by the project, both from a personal and a professional perspective. And this is why I'm personally excited about my task today, which is to link the array of impressive speakers and their presentations. The speakers today who join me on the panel, Ms. C. Sakini, National Content Manager, ExxonMobil, PNG, a senior Papua New Guinean manager. Luke Leary, Executive uh, General Manager with Kumul uh, Petroleum Holdings, uh, he is going to ring us from Ley, and uh, we welcome Luke. Uh, he's with our national oil company. Augustin Mano, Managing Director, MRDC, holding in trust, equity, and shareholding for both mining and petroleum pro uh, projects for our landowners in our country. Uh, Nuni Kuli, Kulu, sorry, President, Business Council of Papua New Guinea. A wider perspective on this impressive Papua New Guinean leader. Andrew Barry, Managing Director and Lead Country Manager, uh, ExxonMobil PNG, the operator of the PNG LNG project. Andrew, today I've classified you as a Papua New Guinean speaker because you speak with deep passion and attachment to the land and her people. And for that, I admire you. We'll commence our webinar with five testimonies captured in short videos that will set the scene, touch and inspire us and C. Sakini will uh, make her presentation, speak to the videos, and, and introduce her, her talk. Across to you, Cesa. Thank you, Richard Kassman. Uh, fellow panelists, Nuni Kula, Kulu, Augustin Mano, uh, Luke will be joining us by phone, and Andrew Barry. It's indeed a pleasure. I'm, I'm online. Here with you guys today. Thank you, Luke, we can hear you. Morning Turu, Tabanamana to you all that have joined us uh, on the webinar, and thank you also for your time. So the PNG LNG is a joint venture project that has been in operation for about six years now. Uh, it took about four years to construct and more than a decade to get it to the stage where it could be commissioned for development. So today, as we reflect, as Richard has mentioned, on the PNG LNG journey to date and the impact that it's had on Papua New Guinea, I would like to draw your attention to the picture of the Lakitoi that's on the screen right now. This magnificent traditional canoe was built by our ancestors from the Motuan coastline out of necessity at a time of great need. Today, it is a legend, an inspiration that continues to inspire the Motuan people, the Karamas, 
the Kikoris of the Gulf, and into Sembrigi, Erave, the Kutubu, Foy, and Fasu to the, of the Southern Highlands, and further into Hela and Enga. Across our land in Papua New Guinea, there are many other similar trade routes and stories that form the basis of PNG's traditional economy and trade. These are stories of connectivity, enterprise, creativity, community, and collective benefits. And in a land of diversity like ours, these trades helped to create the bonds across our differences. It is indeed a story that we on the PNG LNG project draw, that do draw inspiration from because it shows how different stakeholders working together can come together and effectively execute a successful enterprise. That's the theme of today, one team moving PNG forward. So in the spirit of this, we start this webinar by having some of the key stakeholders of this project share their story. Their journey, just like uh, the Kiri trade, just like the story of the first Lakatoi led by Edai Siabo from Boira Village, is the story of the first LNG project in Papua New Guinea. And as Andrew often tries to remind us, it is all about the people. So as you listen, for those of you who are familiar with traditional trade stories of PNG, I'd like you to reflect on some of the similar similarities between these stories and the Hiri trade. So the voices that we'll hear uh, in a short nine minute video, I'd just like to introduce them, the five individuals that, we've, that will be featured in this video. So it gives me great pleasure to start with Christine Yango, who is a teacher uh, by background, by profession. And I think I mentioned in the last attempt of this webinar that she actually taught me in high school many years ago. And so for her sake and mine, I, I won't mention the year that happened. Um, but she is still the ever vibrant and resilient Hello Woman that I knew back then. After holding a range of roles within ExxonMobil, today she is a safety trainer in our operations and safety training department. Our second speaker is Jeremiah Liliura, and he is our environmental supervisor. One of our young and upcoming leaders within the ExxonMobil PNG LNG operations. Sorry for that. The young people, the next generation of PNG's formal workforce in our industry are an inspiration for many of us. And as you connect with them, you can see the hope of this land. And we have quite a few within our operations that Jeremiah will represent in this video. The third speaker is Kathy Alex, and she is currently the program manager of the Advancing PNG Women Leaders Network. This is a um, alumni network that ExxonMobil has been very instrumental in setting up through our Global Women in Management training program. And there are about 74 Papua New Guinean women that make up this network. And they are women leaders of NGOs, church organizations, micro to small enterprises, landowner leader women, teachers, health workers, and women in the private sector. And we've been sending them to Washington, D.C., Indonesia, we had the opportunity to host one of the sessions here uh, in Papua New Guinea, and they spend a month learning leadership and training skills. The fourth speaker, Corey Chan, represents many members of the PNG LNG supply chain. Corey is the managing director of Total Waste Management, and will share the story of TWM as we fondly know it, and its growth. The growth of these supply chain companies uh, and, and the efforts that they make in growing their industries and the work that they create is important, is an important part of the PNG LNG story and PNG's economy. Our final feature is from Zilla Miro, and she is our competency and training supervisor. Zilla is a very experienced training coordinator and has been the steady backbone of the operations and maintenance technicians training 
program since the start of the PNG LNG op operations. This program during construction was housed uh, at the Dream Inn, and today it's housed at the Petroleum, Kumu Petroleum Academy, and Luke, I will be speaking more to that. So Richard, I'll end there, and, and if we can have the video, please. Thank you. My name is Christine Yango. I'm a holy woman. I come from Hela province. My village is Heights in Como district. Uh, I participated in the UBSA, LBSA. They got me and I've been here. Uh, so during construction through to now. Uh, while working, I was privileged to pay for my children's education. Um, one of them is now working with the high gas development company as a HR acting HR manager. Um, one of my daughter paid for his school. She graduated with a bachelor's degree in science, majoring in environmental science. Um, my son, um, the last son, I was able to self-sponsor him to go to school overseas, China. This is my education also that brought me this far. I went to school in a bus material building in a primary, as well as in a high school, Cobb High School, in a bus material building. But now they have permanent classrooms. Uh, some of those have been assisted by ExxonMobil PNG, like Malanda Primary School, has a very good classrooms that has been supported by the project and uh, teacher's houses as well. So those days of mine, Teachers' houses were of boost material buildings as well, but now they have permanent buildings. For those who are closer to the project, they have realized that it is them who should take ownership and learn from the company. One of the examples is that Paje Iba Women's Group. Now, uh, women are empowered. They grow their produce. They have their own company, and they are the ones that go out to buy the stuff from other women and sell to the Heights Alliance group in Heights. I would say that it is the presence of the company that has um, made a difference in the community. It is starting, you know, it is starting. And if they continue to see other women doing those things, I believe uh, they would be better off in the next five or ten years. My name is uh, Jeremiah Lilira and I am currently the Environmental Supervisor uh, with the Environmental Safety Health uh, Department. Uh, when I first started working with ExxonMobil uh, roughly some 11 years ago, um, in 2009, um, it was kind of uh, exciting to be part of a new and mega project. So it was quite an exposure at the time and uh, to me it was quite at the time a steep learning curve and but you know the opportunity was valuable. I've learned a lot since then. Yeah and then with regard to seeing more of Papua New Guineans being employed uh, and promoted to you know supervisory position and in, in, in that early management role um, you know, it's exciting uh, for myself personally. I've been, uh, uh, been given the opportunity to get up to a lead role and, and now a supervisory role, which is uh, a lot of responsibilities. But it's exciting to see fellow Papua New Guineans uh, coming into those roles and, and eventually to management roles, which is one of the objectives of the company. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to, you know, Malaysia, go to uh, Indonesia, and, and, and it's not surprising that most of the ExxonMobil employees are nationals in those operations, even up to the, the management level. And I think that's a succession planning that the company has. Uh, it's no surprise that we are going through that same uh, succession planning to sustain the business. And also you feel more ownership. Uh, you, you are in a position where you have a lot of decision making about the, the you know, especially the running of the company. and. You support it at that level, and you manage teams that help meet the objectives of of the company uh, as we produce LNG. And it, it it feels a little bit more like you have ownership over what the company say and does. 
and um, and, and it's, it's exciting. Um, my name is Kepi Alex. I'm from Southern Islands Province. My mom is from Jimbu. I am a community development professional uh, with the Bachelor in Tropical Agriculture background. Um, I am a member of the Advancing PNG Women Leaders Network, a GWIM alumni. I went to the GWIM program back in 2012. I was selected as the president of the network. Um, I was so thankful to the skills gained through the G uh, Global Women Management program, a lot of NGO management, a lot of being assertive of who you are as a leader and who you speak to and the people that you're around with. Um, also the qualities of leadership, the characteristics of leadership and um, management of donor grants and stuff like that, ethical leadership and stuff. Uh, that has really helped me and it enabled me to start this network uh, with a aim and a focus specifically to support those women leaders who've gone through the program but are like on their own doing things. We needed a support, an organization that would stay at the back of them to support them in their leadership journey. My name is Corrie Chan. Um, and I'm the Managing Director for Total Waste Management. ExxonMobil and the PNG LNG projects played a, a huge role um, in, in assisting us develop what is typically a, a pretty green industry in Papua New Guinea. So, um, so that, that's been the journey in terms of where we've, how we've started, how ExxonMobil have sort of built, uh, allowed us the platform to build our company. Um, and, and you know it's been a it's been a great journey because you know when we look at waste management in the country as I said it's it's still a, an industry that's in its infancy um, however the the standards that Exxon have have allowed Papua New Guinean operators to to learn from and understand and appreciate has really lifted the profile of our company in terms of how we do business as well you know, in PNG, logistically, it's a very difficult country to operate in. Um, and, and, you know, I guess when it comes to waste, it's always the last thing on the agenda to, to manage. But I think we're, we're slowly changing that mindset that you need to be proactive about managing your waste and doing it properly. Um, and, and that's starting to, to start to get out. It's starting to get out there now to, to other sectors of the, you know, the PNG market as well. My name is Zila Miro. I am the training supervisor at ExxonMobil PNG and I've worked with the company since 2010. Now we don't have to send trainees overseas because we have this facility in country. The, the training that is delivered, the certification is City and Guild. It's a UK standard, it's a world class standard. So our trainees graduating from this facility now graduate with a certificate of, uh, with City and Guild issued from Singapore. Um, so our, our first batch that we sponsored to, to attend KPA was actually ExxonMobil's fourth batch of trainees, intake, intake four. We sponsored 16 and that's 50% of the total class that year. And we felt like uh, we actually helped to start up this place because without ExxonMobil this place wouldn't have started up. Um, they needed the funds to sponsor the trainees, so to run this place. Intake five, and now our current intake six in training, received the full training. So when they finish from KPA and join ExxonMobil, it's not a strange environment they're getting into. We introduce them to all the managers uh, the, that are in the production operations uh, organization. So when they come to us eventually, they feel comfortable when they join us. At site and in the 12 months they actually change you can tell someone's from that little shell they've come out to be uh, confident speakers they can explain stuff if the industry continues to grow uh, in the oil and gas this facility has the capacity to grow and provide the training needed for Papua New Guineans Thank you. So I hope you all drew some key insights and inspiration of the impact that the PNG LNG 
uh, project is making and, the, um, and our industry from that short video. I'd now like to take this opportunity to expand a little bit more on the contribution of our industry and PNG LNG project to women's empowerment. Some of you might be asking, why is this even a topic when we talk about the benefits of the PNG LNG project? 24 years ago, I made a trip tomorrow as an intern to join our young oil and gas industry. It was both exciting and nerve-wracking. I was excited because it was my first time into Kutubu. Uh, I had heard about the Lake Kutubu and knew that it hosted one of the most important resource development that our country had at that time and continues to contribute to the economic growth. But also nervous because I didn't know what to expect there. So we flew into a small airstrip at Orokana, dropped off a couple of students there, and, and the four of us that were interns, three guys and myself, continued to Morro. Upon arrival at Morro Camp, I quickly learned that I was a woman in a man's world. Every challenge that I faced seemed to tell me that I did not belong there. Now, I recall laughing when my son and I were watching the movie Hidden Figures, and some of you may be familiar with this movie. But in that movie, the black women in NASA do not have access to the washrooms and, uh, because these were assigned to the white employees. And when I started laughing, my son was like, Mom, why are you laughing? I said, this reminds me of Kopi Base Camp, where you know each time we had to use the washroom, uh, the females had to run all the way back to our rooms. The walkie-talkie was constantly a buzz with horse whistles. And I often remember sitting, whether I was stuck out in a village or on the vehicle, in tears because it was just too much to sort of say anything back on, on the radio. To add to all these challenges, I spent that whole rotation, about 12 weeks, walking around like Donald Duck because the only boots that were available were size 10. So those of you that know me know that I'm not a size 10. I've called the story that I tell um, my personal story, she is a stakeholder, to highlight the badge that I've carried around since I joined the his industry. Over the years, this interest of, to address women's issues or hindrances to women's participation in our industry and in our community has grown and become a part of my personal and organizational role, along with others, that the female members of our community and businesses should be actively involved and participating. So fast forward a couple of years, the PNG LNG project enters Papua New Guinea. And yes, there are still challenges as women, but I must say within the workplace, Many of these have been drastically improved. When I found it to be a signature focus within ExxonMobil's community investment portfolio and part of its diversity policy, I knew that I could leverage this to make the impact PNG needs to boost women's participation in the modern economy of Papua New Guinea and in our industry. And that opportunity has been an exciting one. I remember when the project first started and we traveled up to Juni during those really busy construction days and I noticed a female Tari woman security guard and I was like, wow, can we please announce this to the whole world? Can this be front, front page news? And since then, I have seen young women like Noni Airy operating our loading berth at the plant site our first woman as a control room supervisor, and the list just goes on and on and on. It's something that we on the PNG LNG project are very proud of, and I think often we're, we're, there's a little bit of a notion that we talk maybe too much about this. But these women are given amazing opportunities, and it really makes a difference. In addition to these successes, um, I also just wanted to point out, you know, network supports that are now available. 
and helping to identify and remove bar barriers and looking at ensuring the ripple effect into communities. So these include the, we have within the workplace, the Women in Energy Network, not just here in Papua New Guinea, but this is also an ExxonMobil program around, in different affiliates around the world. Here in PNG, we also have the Business Coalition for Women, and I'll just put a plug in there. If your company is not part of that um, organization, I'd suggest that you sh sign up. But this was set up by the IFC World Bank and strongly supported by the business community in Papua New Guinea. This is a whole new era indeed from those early days that I referred to 24 years ago. And uh, yes, I have found boots that fit and in the color that I like, they're purple. So moving forward, I just sort of want to end with asking the question again. Why is this an important topic? And I know Richard hears about it from us every year when we have the annual chamber conferences. So personally, like Christine mentioned, the opportunity as a woman to participate in this industry has made a huge difference in my family's livelihood. I have two sons, and God must have known that you know I needed the balance, so he gave me two sons to bring up. And I see that their future is very different from one that I come from, I came from. They will have very empowered women walking into their lives. <clears throat> and I am very confident that both of them will know how to deal with these women because they were brought up in a home, a family, supported by a company and an industry that has allowed their mom to make a difference in their lives and also to the wider community. Taking it to the national level, if a society really wants to see poverty lines improve, creating jobs for women is definitely one of the clear activities to reducing poverty, creating social justice, and seeing increased investments in health and education. Give her a purple boot. She indeed is a stakeholder and an important one to see our investments in development reach all sectors of our community. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much, Cesar. Impressive, diverse, and contrasting stories and, and experiences that speak for themselves. And Cesar, I just want to know, uh, let you know that you, you Christine, Janet, uh, and Zilla, uh, when I think of women's empowerment, that's the picture I have in my mind. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that story with a, with a slight personal touch at, at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you.